This is Daily Armenia, Civilnet's Daily News Digest. Here's what's making headlines in Armenia today. Sergei Shoigu, the chairman of Russia's Security Council, claimed in a meeting with his counterparts from post-Soviet countries in Moscow yesterday that Western countries interfere with the affairs in the South Caucasus, undermining security in the region. There are external players that prevent the security situation from improving. We are talking about Western countries that pursue improper goals, Shoigu said, again stressing that regional problems need regional solutions. Russia's Foreign Intelligence Service made a similar statement yesterday claiming that the United States is planning to carry out a propaganda campaign aimed at discrediting Armenia's cooperation with Russia, while also increasing its influence in the country using civil society groups. At the same time, Russia enjoys major armed presence in the South Caucasus, maintaining a military base in Armenia's city of Gyumri and the Erebuni airfield in Yerevan, while its military controls the breakaway regions of Abkhazia and South Ossetia, internationally recognized as parts of Georgia. Russia also has an allied cooperation agreement with Azerbaijan and has close ties with Iran, which has become a significant trade and military partner for Moscow after the Russian invasion of Ukraine in 2022. Iran's ambassador to Armenia, Mehdi Sopani, said yesterday that a new bridge with higher capacity should be constructed at the border between the countries to boost trade, adding that direct flights from the airport in Armenia's southern city of Kapan should be launched to various Iranian cities. According to state news agency Armin Press, our trade turnover currently amounts to $700 million, and the leaders of both countries have already set a goal to reach $3 billion. To achieve this, we need to create infrastructure. Sabhani said at a press conference in Kapan. According to Sabhani, the infrastructure improvements are expected to increase the daily number of trucks by several hundred, which would contribute significantly to reaching the ambitious trade turnover goals. As of now, there's a single checkpoint on the border between Armenia and Iran in the southern more Sunnic region of Armenia, which is Iran's only open land border. Armenia's government has recently attracted substantial funds from various international institutions to construct a new highway connecting the Iranian border with Yerevan. The Sunik airport reopened near the city of Kapan last year after being abandoned since the late 1980s. Currently links Armenia's southernmost region with Yerevan, operating three passenger flights each week. The facility has so far served no scheduled international flights. Its tarmac located immediately near the Azerbaijani border. The airport came under Azerbaijani gunfire on several occasions. Armenian Prime Minister Nikol Pashinyan and French President Emmanuel Macron met on the sidelines of the 5th European Political Community Summit in Hungarian capital Budapest yesterday, discussing the Armenia-France cooperation and the normalization process between Yerevan and Baku. Additionally, the two leaders discussed the cooperation between Armenia and the European Union, including the ongoing dialogue on visa liberalization and the reforms being implemented in Armenia with the support of the EU. In a separate event at the summit, President Macron called on European countries to take back control and not become herbivores that can be devoured by geopolitical opponents, urging a more assertive stance on the global stage. This remark likely came as a reaction to Donald Trump's victory in the United States presidential election, as Trump repeatedly signaled during his campaign that he would cut the US financial assistance for Ukraine in its war against Russia, expecting Europe to put more effort if it wants to further support Kiev's pro-Western or orientation. And finally, the civil net number of the day is 110. This is because Edward Esabekan, a famous Armenian painter, was born 110 years ago today. He was highly prolific, with a large section dedicated to his works in Armenia's National Gallery, as well as a separate gallery named after him that opened in central Yerevan in 2013. Esabekan's paintings captured the essence of Armenian realism, portraying everyday scenes, rural landscapes, as well as historical events, in a striking impressionistic style with vibrant colors. And as always, please follow Civilnet for the latest news and independent reporting from our contributors on the ground here in Armenia.